y'all it is hope at crafty hope and i am working in this little junk journal that i made um from a robin marie smith um she has a workshop um i believe it's called transitions that she is offering free during this time um it's pretty awesome so i'm using that journal that i made and some stabilos woodies sorry stabilo woodies now this is part of my 100 day project i've picked 100 materials that i have in my craft room that i either don't use or need to use more of or just have stockpiled and um so I, on this day my specific thing was my stabilo woodies and i kind of and i really love these but i realized in looking at them for this project that there were five of them that the tips still looked pretty non-broken in and that was my silver and the gold and the red and light blue and pink so i grabbed those and decided i was going to use those um now the page that i'm working on is an altered um what is it scrapbook paper that i altered with different things but the top layer of it is a sewing pattern and it's kind of bumpy and rough and all kinds of stuff and it had a little touch of gold on it already and i just kind of put some of those colors of stabilo down on that page scribbled them around used a wet paintbrush and just had a little fun with it um playing with how those went so once once I got a couple of those colors down, I took this, um, it's like a mini stencil from Tim Holtz that I really, really love. Something about these loopy designs are just gorgeous. So, and I knew exactly that was what I wanted to put on this page. So I went and grabbed that along with some Payne's Gray Master Touch paint from Hobby Lobby. And I'm using just a cosmetic brush to put a little bit of that stencil down and give this had a lot of really straight lines on it, and I think this kind of loopy stencil kind of helped break up those those really straight lines, give it a little more fluidity. Because these are kind of like, I don't know, like waves or, I don't know, curvy drops or something. So here I try to work in that silver stabilo, and it really, it never shows up. It's, it's I don't know, I'm going to have to find some way to get that silver stabilo to work. The gold did pretty good in here. But the silver, I don't know, I don't think my heart was completely in it because I already had the gold on that upper left corner on this page when I started. So I knew that that gold stabilo was going to work a little bit better than the um, than the silver anyway. So I'm going to have to work with that, that silver one another time. So and I darkened a little bit of an area, that bottom corner there for some reason with that um, paint gray that was sitting there. And then I pull out my Deco Arts Media Gesso and a plastic palette knife. And I'm just going to scrape it over just to bring this started to feel really dark. Um, there was already a touch of black on that page. It was a little bit of a smokiness. And um, then I added that paint spray. So I was like, let me let me get a little bit of, of white in here and brighten it up. Um, I also wanted to accentuate the texture that was on there when that page was created with the sewing pattern. I made sure the sewing pattern was kind of wrinkly and so I wanted to you know kind of bump up some of that texture in there and um, so that's what I did I just kind of rubbed that gesso over there and then I'm coming in I kind of wanted to see how these the woody reacted with the with the gesso so parts where the gesso was kind of lumpy I'm just running that pink stabilo through it and um, and it was kind of neat because it tinted really lightly tinted the um, the gesso. So I um, I play with this for quite a bit, you know, going over a couple areas with that stabilo and rubbing it. Um, of course, I'm trying to get the gesso off my stabilo. I don't want to. I keep saying stabilo, my woody man. I um. So. Um, yeah, so I did that. I played with that pink for quite a bit. Pink's not usually a color, especially a light pink. It's not usually a color I put in things. It's such a, um, just a baby soft color, but I decided, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's bring that in here and see how it does. And it really definitely popped on top of the gesso more than any other place. So, and I didn't even try this page. Oh, you see, I'm just taking that piece of um, dictionary paper and just blotting off any area that was too wet. 
Now this is a Lindy's uh, Stamp Gang Spray in a light blue, and I kind of wanted to, since I had that light pink in there, I wanted to bring a bit of light blue in there. I did have the blue with the, the Stabilo Woody, but I wanted, I don't know, I kind of wanted a little sparkle, wanted a little shimmer. I had the shimmer from the gold, and I thought, okay, well, I want a blue shimmer. So that's what I did. Sprayed that just specifically in two little spots and I'm kind of just dragging my paintbrush around that's got a little bit of that Lindy spray on it. Um, and it doesn't show up a ton in the end result but it's you know it's nice to have a little bit of a something something going on down there. Um, yeah, you see me sitting and thinking about this. Um, this page came together in one quick haul. I um, I've sped it up a little bit, but um, not a whole lot. Now, for some reason, I wanted to add some doodling in here, and I grabbed this food ball. I think that's what it's called, um, pen, which is a lot of fun to play with. Um, and I just added some little marks up there in the top right corner, and I think I'm going to add some down um, a little bit lower below that. Um, and I almost immediately realized I do not like these marks. They... No, I, I don't like them. They are too structured for the flowiness of the rest of the page. And so I immediately <laughs> start trying to cover them up. You see here, I grabbed that, that pink Stabilo again. And um, I think even, what color is that one? Even the gold one. And I'm just like, no, these, this has to go away. So I am um, do my best to kind of, yeah, get those wiped off and go on because they were just too structured for everything else I have going on here. And so I did struggle with this at this point of it, but um, the rest of this comes together pretty quickly here. I went and grabbed just a yearbook page that was sitting over in my closet on top of some stuff, and I find a picture um, that I like of this girl. I don't know what drew me to her, but something was like, hey, I, she is fun. We're going um, to just throw her down on this page. I get her cut out. And I trim off. There's still like a white line around her, and that takes me a minute to oh, get that. And then I don't really like corners, so and I knew I couldn't tear that the way I wanted, so I just kind of rounded the corners a little bit. And I knew she needed, when I put her down the page, I was like, oh no, she's never going to pop here. So I grabbed my little bucket of, of scraps and, and stuff I have by my desk, and I pick out some papers. Um, I made sure to pick out a little bit of sewing pattern there to kind of bring back that um, that element into this stack as well. So I knew I wanted that. And then I've got a couple things. Like I said, this I didn't do any collage in this page, which is kind of weird for me since it is one of my favorite things. But whatever. So, and then I'm going to play with this for all. You see, that's far too big to go on that page. It takes up the whole page. I didn't, I don't like anything that's, I don't know. I work so hard on those backgrounds that I don't want to distract from too much in the background, especially since I had that really fluid, yummy stencil that was on there, and I had worked so much with the colors, with the, the woodies. So I finally get um, get that down, and I decide to use the woodies to kind of color her face a little, so I put some pink on her cheeks and realize that that's not quite as dark as I want, so I put some red. Um, and then I kind of want to make the background pop a little, so in a minute I'm going to take, I believe it's the gold, and I just decide to color in the background around her. Now I know something else, um, a darker color or something would have definitely made her pop a little bit more, but I think by using the gold I was kind of bringing in the gold that was around on the rest of the page. Um, and, um... Yeah, see, I mess with her a little. I do rub, but since the Stabilo is a three-in-one, I do rub it a little bit. And then I've got this, what is that? It's a pit pen from Faber-Castell that I'm just going around the outside edges to kind of frame her. Just, just a smidge to make her stand up off that, that stack of papers. And I wasted no time just going ahead and gluing that stack down together so that, um, so I could get it down the page. I knew I had, um futzed with everything a little bit more than I needed to. So I'm trying to go ahead and get her on down here. And I'm just using, since everything's paper to paper, I'm just using my Uhu glue stick 
to get her down there so I take my finger and just kind of blend that gold into the background a little bit more so you don't see the lines as much but the woodies being a three and one means that they're a crayon they're water like a watercolor crayon and then they're kind of like a pastel and they blend a little bit I think that's three <laughs> but um that yeah that makes them so yummy so I've got this large print book text here that I grabbed and um, immediately this um, phrase stood out that says, I don't know anymore. And that's how I feel a lot of days with this whole um, self-isolation um, and social distancing and all of this. And day by day, I just, I just don't know anymore. It's um, doing my best to, to play my part to self-isolate and um, take care of my family and keep myself distracted. But um, it's, you know... I don't know anymore. I'd, I'd love to go out and do the things, but I know that's best for everybody if if I stay home. So that's what I'm doing. So I get all of that down, all glued, and I had a look at it for a while. I'm going to futz with more things. Um, yeah, here's another guy. I even took a, I took, cut it out, but I took a picture of it and looked at it and tried to figure out what it needed. Um, and you see I'm going to put down a little bit more blue because I realized it didn't have quite enough blue even though I put that um, that Lindy spray on there in blue. And I need a little more red. I'm just trying to bring some of the colors across. Um, I think I had those colors maybe on some of the right side of the page but I didn't have them on the left so I decided to bring them across the left. I like to make sure everything's like kind of cohesive. Um, and what I end up deciding is that the phrase that I put down there is just a little too stark. Um, and I'm going to take my Lindy's and a paintbrush and just color that phrase a little bit in a minute, um, with it again here. Um, I think, yeah, that was again me, like I need some of this across the side of the page. I didn't have a whole lot of vertical lines except on that far right, so I was trying to get some more vertical going on here. Um, because right along that, that edge where I kind of bound the book, um, there was a lot of vertical. So here's why I bring that Lindy's in. And like I said, I'm just going to take my paintbrush again and get a little bit of the spray and color that phrase to, um, to kind of blend it. And that brings that blue back in again. And that's it for this page, guys. If you uh, want to see more from me, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you get notifications. Um, give me a thumbs up and come back again and see what else I've got going on. I hope y'all are doing well. Thanks for watching. Bye.